Hello everyone and welcome to our session. Here we will take a closer look at both GitHub Actions and Azure DevOps. But first and foremost, we'd like to clarify why we're doing this talk. And to do that, we need to go back a few years. As you might be able to recall, on the 4th of June, 2018, Microsoft announced that it was going to acquire GitHub. The statement from Microsoft was that both companies would be working together to let developers achieve more, to accelerate enterprise developers' adoption of GitHub, and to bring Microsoft DevTools to new audiences. On the same day, Microsoft also released a blog post on devblogs.microsoft.com, where they reaffirmed their stance on VSTS and TFS, stating that both GitHub and VSTS would continue to exist in parallel. VSTS was going to become even more modular and extensible to deliver more flexibility and to allow for different adoption patterns to occur. Later that year, in September, Azure DevOps was released. And if we jump back to the present for a sec, at the time of this recording, and it's April 2021, nearly three years later, um, you should be able to tell by the roadmaps on the right that both Azure DevOps and GitHub are still alive and well. Both products are still getting frequent feature updates. One of these updates for GitHub is called GitHub Actions, and it is conceptually similar to Azure Pipelines, but it allows you to tap into the GitHub ecosystem. Now, before we proceed any further, introductions are in order. So, hi, my name is Thomas van Laren, and I am a independent Microsoft Azure consultant. I help organizations with lowering their operational costs through the Azure platform and open source technologies. I'm also joined by my colleague, Micha Betz. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Thomas, for this awesome intro. So my name is Micha Betz. I'm technology strategist at Aspex. I'm a independent contractor, so you can hire me and Thomas as well, who is also independent for uh, jobs, for assignments. I became Microsoft MVP at the end of 2018 on the enterprise mobility but uh, I mainly focus on Windows Virtual Desktop and Azure Services Automation PowerShell, but also, of course, GitHub and Azure DevOps. Um, I will quickly take over the screen. And we will dive right into the first topic of today, GitHub. Uh, we will talk about GitHub repository, workflow, and GitHub Actions, of course, which is our main topic. Um, GitHub Actions, if you want to start with GitHub Actions and you want to deploy something or you want to test something into Azure, you need that connection to Azure because by default, GitHub Actions is unable to connect to your Azure environment. To do that, you need to use Action Secrets. Um, I will show that in a demo how you can do it, but that's the very first thing that you need to do. It's really awesome to do that. There is a Azure CLI command, which gives you all the information that you need for that secret. So you use the AZ AD SP create for RBAC, which stands for Azure Active Directory Service Principle, and then create for RBAC. And it gives you as you can see in this screenshot, a JSON output, and you use that JSON output into your secret and you're good to go. Then Azure, uh, then GitHub Actions knows how to connect to your Azure environment. I did it in the Azure uh, shell, so you can just type in that commandlet and you're good to go. After you have your secret, you can start creating your repository, of course, and start with your very first workflow. Um, you can set it up at a pull request, as we will demo, um, and that pull request will first execute a build, and the build will check it. After that, you can enable branch protection and set up your release pipeline. So it's not only for CI, you can also use it for CD, so for continuous delivery. Enough with the 
PowerPoints. Let's dive in. We promised it would be demo filled, so we will be doing quite some demos as well. This is my GitHub repository. Um, so I, I created a, a empty one for this demo. First, you create your RM templates. This is a simple RM te template for a storage account, which is in the RM storage account directory. My deploy.json file is there, which has parameters and which will deploy a storage account. As all good things come, we also use the parameter file, so we don't put them hard-coded into the RM file. We use a parameter file as well, where we specify which name we want to use, which region we want to use, and also which uh, count type that we want to use. As soon as you have this, you already have your repository, you have your RM files. So basically you're good to go to start deploying in Azure. Then you go to settings from your repository and over here you can see secrets. In secrets, you can add a specific secret. As you can see, I already added a secret right over here, which is called my Azure Clets. And this one is containing the JSON file that I got from my uh, Azure CLI output. So in this secret, I have my CLI output put in my JSON, and I can use this secret now to um, start using it. You can also add additional secrets, of course, but my Azure Clets is now the secret that I will be using to connect to my Azure environment. As soon as you have this, you can go to code and you can start creating the first workflow. First workflow that you want to use is your validation workflow, of course. Um, let's skip the release. First, go to the validation. And um, in the validation, it's YAML based, so it's always in YAML for um, GitHub Actions. Um, you give your workflow a name, which is the basic validate name. And we see over here, if, so on means kind of an if, if there is a pull request on my main branch, then I will be executing these jobs. This is a basic example. So we're going to keep it simple in the validation. We give our job a name. They, we call it build. We give it an output name. So this is display name, build and validate. It runs on the latest Ubuntu, so we're going to use a out-of-the-box uh, agent from Microsoft. We're going to check out the repository, and this is where the secret comes in. We're going to log in into Azure and use our secret, my Azure Threads. And then we're going to do a validation from our parameter and the JSON. Um, so this will be the first thing that we do, and it's set up to be a pull request only uh, workflow. Once this has been executed, once this workflow has been executed, you can go back to your settings and you can go to the branches. And over here we can deploy branch protection rules, which means that we can protect a specific branch. What I did, I already deployed it I already said, okay, on my main branch, I want to make sure that there are specific status checks passed before merging. And as you can see, build and validate is in, in my list. I already checked it, also for administrators. And this means that if we save this, and I type in my password, but it's already set, so we're good to go. That means that my build and validate needs to be executed before we can do anything else on our repository. So if we go back and let's go for the storage accounts, let's see, and we're gonna go for the parameter file. Let's edit this one. I'm gonna add an additional enter, which will do nothing to the syntax, but it's just an example. And as you can see, my branch has been protected, so we can't just commit to the main branch. We need to create a separate branch where we will 
start our pull request. And it gives me a name. I will say, OK, let's commit this major update. You can leave some comments if you want. And as soon as we say, OK, let's do the pull request, you can see that some checks haven't been completed yet. And in the background, there is our validation workflow um, kicking in and working as we speak. And you can see we cannot merge the pull request until, until this check has been completed. We can go to details, where we see, OK, this is the basic validate. This is the workflow that's been kicking off. Build and validate has been started. It's now using one of the GitHub Actions um, agents in the background, which we can use. And if we wait for a few seconds, then we will see that it's kicking in. Um, if we jump to our Azure environment, this is the, the target resource group. It's completely empty, so there is no, um, no items yet in this repository, in this resource group. But normally, this should not take too long. Let's see. If you don't want to wait and you want to see all the other previous actions, you can click on Actions. Over here, you see your workflows. So this is the basic validate workflow. It's already completed. <laughs> so the, the portal was just not refreshing. Um, so if we go back to the latest one. OK, so all checks have been passed. So it did indeed commit um, all the items that we say. It did indeed log into Azure. It deployed our RM file, as you can see over here inside the JSON. It only did the validate, so it doesn't deploy anything. So we will not be able to see anything right over here. It only validated the RM file, but it is complete. And because it is complete, we can indeed do the pull request merge, which would merge it into the main branch. Now, we also want to have a CI CD, so not only CI, but also the CD. So I added an additional release. The same has been added, but now we have a push, which means as soon as we do the push into a in the main branch, this one will kick off. And as you can see, we have two jobs, build and deploy now. So first we do, again, build and validate, just to make sure that it is still valid. And after that, we deploy and we do the incremental. This has been added as well. So if we go back to the pull requests and we say, OK, let's merge this one. It is, it is merged into the main branch. And if we go back to the actions, to the basic, now you can see, OK, the next one is kicking off as well, where we now have two jobs running. First, build and validate. And afterwards, we go for deploy to Azure. So in this way, we do a validation from the pull request. Pull request has been validated by our workflow. As soon as that is complete, we go back to um, the pull request, we merge it, and we do uh, the second workflow, which is the release, where we do a build and validate and deploy to Azure. So in a few seconds, this one should be complete as well. Check out posts and ready. And the second one is kicking in right now, where we do the deploy to Azure, and the deploy to Azure will simply deploy and create our storage account. Into this resource group, so in a few seconds, it should not take that long, but it will be added here as well. And in this way, we have with only a few uh, with two YAML files, we have a full um, workflow created where we do a validation and a release all in one. OK, 
Back to you, Thomas. All right, thanks, Micha. On to Azure DevOps. Many of the things that Micha mentioned are already available in Azure DevOps. And as with his demo, we'll take a look at how we can create a connection to Azure through a service connection. After creating a new repository, we will set up a very bare bones pipeline that is able to connect to an Azure Key Vault to retrieve a secret. Um, but most of these things are very similar to how it is done in GitHub Actions. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're in the Azure DevOps portal now, and we're in our GitHub Actions versus Azure DevOps project. So on the bottom left here, you click the project settings button, and you'll be taken to the project settings. And here you can enable and disable certain services if you want to. You can also tinker around with lots of other different settings, but we're mo most interested in the service connections. So under pipelines, go to service connections. And here we will create a new service connection to Microsoft Azure. You can see that I already have a service connection towards GitHub and also one towards Microsoft Azure, but we're going to create a new one. So click the new service connection button and then uh, select the Azure Resource Manager. And by the way, as you can see, there's plenty of different connection types to choose from. So Microsoft is really playing into the whole extensibility commitment. Uh, let's click next. And now you can select um, either a service principle that can be created automatically. So based off of your uh, current credentials that you're using in Azure DevOps, a service principle can be created in um, your Azure Active Directory. Um, and you can also assign it to, a, to an Azure subscription. So if you do it via the automatic way, um, Azure DevOps takes care of that for you. But um, if you do it through the CLI uh, and you get the credentials from the CLI, then you can also enter those manually here. So we're going to select the manual option, click next, select our environment. So most of the times this will be the Azure Cloud or Azure Stack. Um, and then you select the scope level, the subscription ID, the subscription name, the service principal ID. Um, you can also enter the key here. If you have a certificate, you can also uh, use that option. And then you fill in the tenant ID and you can hit the verify button and click verify and save. And then you will have a new service connection created, much like this one right here. Okay, so next up, we will go into the repositories under repos, simply click repositories. As you can see, I already have one repository here. So that is uh, one that we will use for a different demo. Um, you can also modify some of the default settings in the repositories. So this applies to all the repositories. Um, so if you want to use a default, a different default branch name, you can specify that here. You can also set uh, repository policies and branch policies for all the um, policies uh, for all the uh, repositories and branches that you currently have. Uh, this one is particularly interesting because you can set project-wide branch policies. So for instance, um, when we want to have a policy for the release branch, for release branches, we can uh, create that here. So for instance, for every branch that starts with release slash, um, we can specify a minimum number of reviewers, for instance. Um, we can set that to two. We can even automatically include some reviewers. So maybe I can include myself as a uh, reviewer, a required one. So I'll hit save. Um, there we go. So that's very useful. Um, let's go back to the repository settings. And again, th these settings have been persistent. So there you go. There's a branch policy created now. Um, and you can also set the security settings for, for the security defaults for all the repositories right here. So, okay. So if we go back to repositories and create a new one, um, we can specify that here. Um, just simply enter a 
repository name, so my repository. Uh, you can specify whether or not you want a readme file, a default readme file, and also a git ignore. And again, you can see that this is a pretty comprehensive list of uh, git ignore files that you can generate. Um, but we'll just go with the Visual Studio one. Let's assume that we're creating a C Sharp application or something. Uh, and we simply hit create. And there we go. There is our test repository. If I click on it, um, I can again set some settings uh, similar to the ones that we just saw uh, earlier, the default settings, but can apply it to this specific repository. So if I were to go into policies, um, you can see that there is one branch policy already created for the main branch, um, but nothing has been defined yet. So um, as you can recall in Micha's demo, he had a build validation um, check in there. Uh, so we can also do that. We can also create one of those, but we will need a pipeline for that. And we currently don't have that. So let's go back and create one. Um, we'll go into the pipelines right here. So pipelines, pipelines, then create your first or a new pipeline. The first thing that we need to do is we need to specify where our code lives. So again, you have a lot of different options to choose from. Uh, you can select GitHub, or GitHub Enterprise Server, but we're going to go ahead and uh, use our newly created repo in Azure repos. Uh, again, this is my test repository. And we will create a starter pipeline. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simulate a build task. So uh, build and validate. Let's just call this build and validate. And we're going to echo performed a build and did some validation. OK, and that is enough for now. We just want to simulate um, a build and validate. I mean, Michael already showed you how to do it. So it's actually quite similar to what you would do in uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this pipeline. Commit it to the main branch. That's, that is fine. And then we can also rename it. You have to do this through the UI. There we go, build and validate date good all right um now let's go back to the project settings into our repositories my repository we'll go ahead and go back to the branch policies and this time we will create the build validation step so let's add it our pipeline is visible this time around uh, we can leave these default settings for now. Uh, we, we can call this build and validate. Okay, so whenever someone um, forms a pull request on the main branch, this is going to be triggered. So ideally, you want to have uh, some sort of script in there or a program that checks everything. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's trigger that. So maybe we can create a new branch, feature docs based on the main branch. There we go. Okay, we've switched and now we can modify the readme a little bit. Added something here. We can commit this and now we can also create a pull request so we're going to perform pull request from the feature docs into main uh, click create as you can see a required check has not yet been run and it is actually going to start it now so if we wait a little bit we can actually check the build and validate step. And as you can see, it's uh, it's got this little icon here indicating that it's uh, a policy. 
it was successful. And if we take a look at that, um, that job, our build and validate step uh, performed a build and did some validation. So that is good. Again, you want to uh, make this a little more specific than this, but it's okay for illustration purposes, I suppose. So let's go back, back to our pull requests. We will just approve that to complete it. Keep the branch for now. Let's just keep it. And a merge is being performed. And there we go. It's been completed. And since the um, pipeline did specify that uh, it, it would trigger on uh, changes to the main branch. It will also rerun here. So again, this is just going to work because it's a simple echo that is uh, being performed. There we go. So that is working properly. Okay, with that out of the way, let's create one more pipeline. Um, this pipeline will connect to Azure, so we'll see how that works. Um, we will select our repository again, create a starter pipeline, remove this, and I am actually going to set this trigger to a feature deployment pipeline. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to keep this script. Um, this one can go. And I'm going to add a different step. So I'm going to show the assistant here and list all the tasks. As you can see, there's many different tasks. Uh, a lot of uh, tasks have to do with Azure. Um, there's also a more, um, there's different ones that you can select here, like CMake and so on. So lots of different options here. You can always include your own uh, if you want to. But for our purposes, we're just going to use Azure Key Vault here. And as you can see, we can select the service connection here and our key vault shows up. We're not going to apply a secrets filter, so we're just going to download all of the secrets and these will be turned into variables, all of them. So a variable um, can be defined in many different ways. So if you want to define them in your pipeline, YAML, for instance, so we can create uh, another variable here if we just give it a name. So let's call it foo, give it a value of bar. And then we will be able to reference this variable uh, in our scripts or in other tasks. So to do that, it uh, depends on the scripting language that you're using and by default, uh, I believe since this is an Ubuntu uh, VM image, uh, it'll use bash. So the syntax for that is like so. And I believe that in our key vault, there is a secret called my top secret value, if I remember correctly. So this output is actually going to be masked by the uh, agent, the Azure DevOps agent. Um, another way that you can declare a variable uh, is outside of your YAML file. So this is actually going to be committed to the repository. So there are sometimes scenarios where you would rather not have certain variables uh, listed um, in a file. And uh, when you encounter such a scenario, you can use this button right here. Uh, and you create, a, you can create a variable that is stored separately from your repository. So um, we can do that. We can make a new variable called foo2, bar2, and you can um, tick this box and it will turn it into a secret. So again, um, whatever you try to echo it or do something with it, the output is masked. Um, you can still use it in tasks and in scripts, um, but it will just not output to the screen. So you can check this box and it already turns it into these dots, um, but we'll, we'll keep it like this for now. And there are a couple of examples um, on how you can use them in different uh, languages.
scripting languages. So, okay. Uh, this variable is now accessible only in this pipeline, by the way. So we can uh, use it like so. We can just do foo2. And if we uh, save it and run it, we'll create a different branch for this. We'll not start a pull request. There we go, it's creating it. And now uh, let's take a look at that job. And it will say that the pipeline needs permission to access the resource before it can continue to run. Um, this is normal. Uh, the first time that a service connection is accessed through a new pipeline, uh, unless you've specified it differently, you will need to allow it. So here we go, we'll just allow this. And now it will queue the job again. If we wait a little bit, we should be able to see that it is actually performing the job and pulling in those secrets from our key vault. There we go. So if we take a look here, you'll see that it's connected. It's um, found two secrets, my top secret value, and please don't look. Uh, and if I go ahead and look at the script, you can see that the output of the secrets and that came from Azure Key Vault has been masked. Um, and the other variables are displaying correctly. So that's what we wanted. Now, another way that you can specify variables is through uh, variable groups. So if we go into the library and create a variable group, you can create um, variable groups here. Um, again, these variables, uh, can be shared across different pipelines this way. So it's very handy if we just uh, create easy key vault here. Um, we'll just allow access to all the pipelines and we will link it to an Azure key vault. You don't need to do this, but again, Azure key vault is uh, pretty safe. So it's uh, also a best practice to store your secrets in Azure key vault whenever possible. So again, specified a service connection like we did earlier in the, in the pipeline, except we're doing it here. It will pull in the available secrets. There's two, and we'll just select them both. Click OK, and we'll save it. Uh, you can also change the security settings so that not everyone is able to access uh, the, the settings of this uh, variable group. Uh, if we go back to our release pipeline, um, to our other pipeline, our YAML pipelines, um, let's rename this deployment. We'll just simulate a deployment here. Again, Mika has showed this, so not a lot of reason for me to show this again, but. Uh, Let's just hook up the variable group here. So group is az key vault. And that should be enough. So if we remove this entirely, we will still be able to access my top secret value because of this group right here. So we'll save it committed to the feature branch, and then we'll run it. Actually, I didn't need to run it because it had a trigger associated to it, but there we go, there it is. So as you can see, it's just queuing it up. Um, you know, I would like to stay on this page. There you go. It will just perform the same task um, through the variable group and it will add the secrets. There we go. 
So yeah, that's how you do some basic actions in Azure Pipelines. Let's go back to the slide deck. Okay, so next up is stages in Azure Pipelines. This functionality allows you to organize jobs into stages. Think of a stage like a build, a test, and a deploy stage. Jobs um, inside of Azure DevOps are typically seen as units of work, while stages add multiple logical divisions to your YAML pipelines. Inside GitHub Actions, however, there is no real alternative to stages. However, you should be able to mimic the functionality of stages with job objects inside of a workflow. Alternatively, you could split up the stages into multiple workflow files. Another thing I'd briefly like to discuss before diving into another demo is the environments feature that Azure DevOps has. This feature allows you to target a specific collection of resources, either virtual machines or Kubernetes clusters, when you execute a pipeline deployment. It also brings with it the ability to view the deployment history down to the work item in DevOps boards, and it allows you to set various sorts of checks and approvals. So let's take a look at both stages and environments in another demo. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to open up the Azure portal for a second. I have three virtual machines. Um, they're all hosted in different regions. So the dev machine is hosted in West Europe. There is a test machine that is also hosted in West Europe. <clears throat> and there is a VM, a test VM that is also hosted in West US. So when we browse to either one of these VMs, um, you can just copy DNS, paste it. You will see that it is hosting an Nginx page. So this is just the default Nginx on uh, Linux. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to push an HTML file to all of these machines, um, depending on the environment that we're tagging in the pipelines. So uh, let's try with our dev environment first. So um, I'll go to repositories and I'll select the GitHub Actions versus Azure DevOps repository. And this has a couple of um, files in it already. So there is a um, an index.html file. Um, you can see that it has a couple of um, tags that are going to be replaced, such as the environment and the build. Uh, and that is actually going to be replaced by a PowerShell script that is right here. Um, we are going to execute this script on uh, the VMs. Um, and that way we can sort of uh, write into this HTML file from which environment the page is being served. So that is just for demonstration purposes. Um, normally you would want to do this in a, a build, um, uh, in a build phase or something like that, but we're actually going to do it um, when this file is actually deployed on the VMs. Um, so yeah, I'll let the YAML file speak for itself. So again, we have a trigger that is set to the dev branch and currently we are in the dev branch. Um, things that you should see here that are different from the previous files. Well, we um, specify jobs now, so we explicitly specify jobs. Um, there is a publishing job that will actually pull this entire repository into a um, zip and um, it is going to publish this. Um, normally you would want to um, just make sure that you copy whatever you need and not include everything. So um, be very cautious when you do this in production or on in your uh, own environments. Um, always try to just publish what is really necessary for an application to run. But since this is just uh, for demonstration purposes, again, um, it doesn't really matter that we're pushing this entire repository out to the um, machines. And then we also have a special job 
object here and it's called a deployment. Um, and the neat thing about deployment jobs is that you can actually specify a specific strategy. Um, it also allows you to um, perform certain actions at various stages of a deployment life cycle. So um, let's say that you want to reroute traffic to another node before uh, running your update script. Well, you can do that um, with one of these um, lifecycle hooks that are defined here. Um, currently, I'm only using one since this is a very basic sort of uh, YAML pipeline. Uh, we're only using the deploy step and we're um, specifying that we are only going to run this uh, once. So every um, lifecycle hook is going to be run at least once. Um, but there's also other strategies uh, that uh, Azure DevOps uh, pipeline supports. So there's also a rolling update strategy and a canary uh, strategy. Um, so really what we're going to do in the deployment uh, step or in the deployment part is we're going to have uh, two tasks. Uh, the first one is uh, obviously uh, the download build artifacts. So um, the artifacts that were published in the previous job are going to be downloaded to the uh, virtual machine. Um, and then our PowerShell script is going to be executed and it's going to replace um, a couple of values there. And the way that we actually target um, which machine that we're um, updating uh, is through this environments um, property. So you can see here that we are targeting the WEU dev environment and we're also specifying which um, which tags that we want to target. So here we could have a, here we're saying that we're actually just targeting all the web servers, or I should say all the machines that have the tags web, dev, and EU within that environment. So if you have like a database server, it'll probably have the DB tag here. So um, then it will not be updated uh, with this uh, strategy or whatever is specified here within this strategy will not apply to any other VMs. Uh, so let me just show you real quick the environment itself. Um, as you can see, I have a couple here. So onboarding or creating a new environment is really easy. Just click the new environment button. Uh, you give it a name. So let's uh, assume that we are going to have a West uh, US production environment. You can uh, give it a description and then you can specify which uh, resources that you want to add. So um, Kubernetes or virtual machines. Um, if you select the virtual machines, uh, you will be which type of operating system it's using currently. Uh, and then you, the only thing you need to do is run this script. So if you copy this command and execute it on the VM, it will actually register itself. Uh, you will also be prompted to enter tags when you uh, run this script. Um, if you don't do it, you can always uh, do it from within the portal. So it's going to create this environment anyway. Um, but let's take a look at the WEU dev. Uh, as you can see, my virtual machine is right here. I can um, manage its tags here. So dev, web, WEU. Um, I can also take a look at the deployments, but I'll go come back to this in a minute. Um, again, you can add resources uh, later. Um, you can also modify the security of this. So if you want to only allow specific people to modify the environment settings, you can define that here, but you can also um, set pipeline permissions right here. So um, if you only want a specific pipeline to run or to execute um, jobs against this um, environment, then you can define that here. So if you want to do that, you can always just select one. So we still have the old ones here from our previous demo, but we're, we're going to change that in a second. Um, and also, there is um, an approvals, the approvals and the checks are defined here as well. I'll come back to this uh, in a second when we uh, deploy our to our testing environment. Um, but for now, let's just go into the pipelines again. Uh, 
create a new pipeline. We know the drill by now. We're going to select the different, the other repository now and select an existing one. We're going to select the dev YAML. Again, this is the file, so that's good. And we are going to run it. So it's going to create the, the pipeline. And there's two jobs in here, so we're going to take a look at what's happening. Again, um, this is still running the same page. So if we go here, uh, the pipeline needs permission. So we'll take a look. Yep, it needs permission to uh, execute against this environment. So we'll allow it. And then it's just a matter of waiting a couple of seconds. until this is deployed. So it's initializing, there we go. Publishing the artifacts, excellent. Cleaning up, and we can always download the artifact from uh, from here or from, the, or from this view. Uh, as you can see, it's already published and it's actually appending which VM it's deploying to. So it's deploying to WEU dev VM01 here. So again, you really have a lot of traceability here this way. Should you have more machines, uh, if you add more machines to your environment. Again, it's running the script. Okay, so that has been done and I think it's complete. So if we refresh this, it should just serve us this. And uh, you yeah, know, that is the same build number from earlier so that's good so there we go that's one way that you can uh, deploy to these environments so again if you look at the deployment history you'll see some some older deployments that i did but uh, the deployment that i did just now is also in here uh, and again you can uh, see which jobs were executed which changes were done um, which uh, work items were associated to this uh, deployment. So it really gives you a lot of uh, traceability here. Um, for the test environment, uh, it's a bit different um, because it also has a, a an approval and a check in there, or a check in there, I should say. There's only one. So it's just got a classic, um, well, uh, an approvals uh, check in there. So I'm the one that has to uh, check whenever a deployment is made uh, to the testing environment before it goes through. But there's a lot of different checks that you can um, define here. There's a lot of different checks that you can define here. Uh, branch control, business hours, evaluate an artifact with uh, a Rego um with the rego syntax um you can even invoke a, an azure function or you can invoke a rest api method if you wanted to um yeah but we're good with just this one so the approvers uh, i don't think i can add it again no uh, i've added this to the weu test and also to the west us test if i remember correctly so let's take a quick peek yeah okay so just to prove to you that this is all new uh, i will copy this there we go dashboard copy this paste okay now we go back to the pipelines same deal uh, again this, this is the the other pipeline again you want to really rename this uh, to something something different but in the interest of time we'll skip that um, so again an existing one and we will pick the test yaml and this one is a bit different because it also has a <clears throat> has a few stages 
So here you can see there's a build stage, there is a deployment stage to West Europe, there's a deployment stage to West US, um, and both of them depend on the build stage, uh, and the build stage has to succeed in order for these uh, stages to start. So um, let's see, I see a typo here, so maybe edit that and save it and run it. So these are also targeting different environments, obviously. Uh, let's run the pipeline. And immediately you'll see that the build stage uh, functions, um, but we will end up having to um, allow this pipeline to access the environments. So we will need to grant it permissions. So this should happen any second now. Okay, that is working. So in a moment, there we go. So this pipeline needs permission. So we will allow West US test, allow West Europe test. And then um, also there are two approvals that need my review before this can continue. Uh, so we will view them. Of course, we're going to approve them, both of them. There we go. So both checks have passed. Again, you can see that it is going to start the deployment any second now, or perhaps it has already started. Yeah, it's downloading artifacts. So there we go. West Europe is complete, so let's take a look. There we go, so West Europe test. Here, West US. Oh, that's an incorrect URL. Okay, let's refresh. Yep, okay, so that's working. Um, so that was Azure Pipelines. Okay, thank you, Thomas, for these awesome multi-stages demo and, and the demos with the environments. A lot of use cases uh, with those options. Um, but um, yeah, let's uh, jump to another <laughs> option that we have, uh, which is called interoperability. Um, it doesn't mean that you only can use GitHub or you can only use GitHub uh, Azure DevOps. You can do many, you can do both of them. Um, so it, it's not only one of the two, you can just combine them. Or you can even combine other um, resources as well. Um, there are too many two lists, um, so we can just uh, put them all in a list. It would take too many slides. Uh, so we just added an example over here. Uh, also, you can you can trigger AC pipelines if there is a specific GitHub actions, or if there is a pull request validation in your GitHub action. Um, also, if the pull request has been executed and you get a branch push, you can start your Azure pipeline. So really, many many options are available. Um, this is a, a a overview that Thomas created. Um, as you can see, we start with a developer which does something in GitHub. Um, it triggers Azure pipelines, which then uses Terraform, which then deploys items in your environment, like an application gateway. Um, so it uses Azure policy, the key vault for the secrets, Many options, um, many things can be combined. Too much to mention over here. So um, it's only to show you that it doesn't have to be one of the two. It can be many solutions that you want to use. If you are currently working in Azure DevOps and you want to migrate to GitHub Actions, um, you can start from scratch, of course. But there are also some community um, solutions 
which will guide you. Uh, we added two over here, which will definitely can um, help you start it, get you started. Uh, the first is a um, conversion tool, which you enter your YAML file from um, the Azure pipelines, and it will convert it into a GitHub, GitHub Action workflow. Um, really nice, so it's it's uh, perfectly working well. It's not um, the full solution, but it really gives you a, a proper start uh, from your Azure pipeline. The second one is for converting your Azure DevOps classic design build into or release into a GitHub action. So if you're still using the classic designer, the, the graphical designer, you can use this tool as well to convert it into GitHub actions. So three, uh, two really awesome uh, community items that we would suggest. Okay, so to wrap up, GitHub and Azure DevOps continue to exist in parallel and both are getting frequent feature updates. As we've seen, both products have lots of similar features when it comes to CI/CD tooling and GitHub Actions is a great product and is very flexible in its own right with its event-driven system. Azure DevOps does seem to be a bit more modular and extensible compared to GitHub, and we think it's still a great choice for enterprise customers who have invested heavily in a Microsoft stack. According to us, GitHub is still the place where open source communities will thrive. Both GitHub Enterprise and Azure DevOps can be used as a service and or as a self-hosted solution. Uh, they both have different pricing models though, so be sure to read up on those terms and conditions when you want to purchase licenses. Okay, after this wrap up, um, there's nothing left besides a big thank you for listening and, and watching the demos, watching our session. Um, we hope we gave you a nice overview of GitHub Actions and Azure DevOps, the differences between it, how you can use it. Uh, we really recommend to start using it because it's really powerful and it's really awesome to work with. Uh, but uh, it's it's a go-to for not only enterprises but also for the the bigger, uh, the smaller companies, which do some automation. So a big thank you, and we hope to see you later on as well. Bye bye. Yep. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.